How do you protect your thyroid? Thyroid is that master gland that can so dominate somebody's life and health. Some of it is environmental. Um, we know that in communities that are low iodine belts, um, that you can get goiter quite commonly. And that's why making sure you're either eating foods that have iodine in them, like sea vegetables and kelp, taking supplements or at least measuring your iodine status, a little bit of iodinized salt, if you're not struggling with high blood pressure, are reasonable choices. Um, there's very few reports of harming your thyroid from cruciferous vegetables like kale. Uh, you would have to eat pounds and pounds and pounds of crucifers a day. Uh, you know, we like variety in our diet. We don't need excess in any one nutrient. Uh, there's just no reason to eat five pounds of bok choy a day. Uh, it's just not a, a decent plan. I mean, bok choy is great, but move it around a little bit. Um, so there is some data from the Adventist health study that people that answered that I eat a vegan diet had less thyroid disease than people that answered I eat other styles of diet, standard American diet. So I think we've got that one on our list as uh, to some degree preventable. You know, there's still causes. There's autoimmune thyroid disease, uh, both the hypo and the hyper Graves kind. And, you know, we don't completely understand what triggers that reaction of antibodies that destroy the gland. But um, so how do I try and optimize health? I test, I test nutrients. I emphasize clean whole food diets. Um, there are some integrative approaches to thyroid health. There's some data, you know, a few people respond to a gluten-free version of a plant diet. I don't generally advocate that unless there's celiac disease, but there's a little data for the thyroid family that might be something they do short term. What impact does a whole food plant-based diet have on preventing chronic kidney disease? Yeah, I think one of the more exciting topics in the last 10 years is actual data that um, we've always known that high protein diets in people with advanced kidney disease could be problematic. They have trouble clearing the protein might even worse than the rate that their kidneys deteriorate. But how about we don't just watch the deterioration? How about we try and reverse the process? So there is now growing data and a small but growing number of nephrologists that are on social media and maybe more importantly, actually writing scientific articles, doing some scientific research that because plant-based diets naturally tend to have more normal blood sugars, blood pressures, blood cholesterols um, are often lower in protein, which is actually healthy. We've bought into the idea that we need so much protein and the consequence kind of can damage our kidneys. So you'll get all the protein you need if you eat fruits, vegetables, grains, and legumes, but you're getting them in a plant-based source that over and over has been shown to be more kidney friendly. And there are cases now some are anecdotal, some are in the literature of small or massive improvements in kidney function by adopting a whole food plant-based diet. There's a Facebook community that particularly teaches this and they have you know, so many, I call them anecdotal, but authentic um, cases. I used to have you know, this level of kidney function and 12 months later on my plant diet, you know, my kidney doctor doesn't understand why, but look how much better my kidney function is. That's very exciting. What impact does eating a whole food plant-based diet have on animals, climate change, and the environment? You know, there's, there's a small noisy group that keep claiming, uh, you know, meat production, chicken production, egg production isn't the problem that we're killing animals when we grow soybeans or edamame and you know these bad vegans are destroying the animals in the environment. It's, there's always gonna be a little dissent because for some reason food discussions just get people backed up against the wall and their traditional cultures and habits and upbringing or their business. But when you look at the big picture, whether you're talking not necessarily my favorite group but the World Health Organization, the United Nations, the USDA, 
big group in Europe last year, Eat Lancet, or maybe it was 2019. And when you get a panel of scientists that are qualified that sit down, you know, uh, water use, forest destruction, greenhouse gas production, CO2 production, you know, a significant, not entire part of it is raising animals, uh, uh, clearing forests for grazing lands and uh, production of corn and wheat and soy just to feed factory raised animals for the growing lust for meats around the world. Unfortunately, uh, United States has had their time, but now in Asia and uh, other countries in Africa, there's, there's more desire for meats and it's driving more need to uh, cut down more of the Amazon and put more animals uh, in cruel circumstance to provide that feed. So yeah, there's no doubt, you know, and uh, intelligent people who do nothing but study this say that by 2050, when we may have 10 billion people on the planet Earth, we're going to need to be much more plant-based or much more factory um, and uh, lab-based meat production uh, and not the traditional model of factory farms and destruction of forests.